he's supposed to be here. That'll be our secret. Him I was, contract will be funny. <laughs> I was told that we were supposed to eat the mic for the purposes of this. I love you too. I love that this has the name of our panel I'm, on it for it's us glowing. as a reminder. Of course, it's, of course you're glowing. Of course you're, that's, Remember yeah. where you are. It's important. That's it's amazing. amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Are you Papa Mercer? Is that a thing? We should have a talk. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Are you reaching Godfather status? I'm really, I'd like, I'd like my nickname for you during it's game. It's technically Poppy Mercer, but Poppy. we're not going to. No. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm, my chair's broken. I'm, oh, no. Us, we got an extra chair. Do you want to just. My, my chair, the seat throw, throw, throw might the chair fall away. out. Throw, 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 throw the chair back. You want to do this? As all of you start filing in, please make sure that you're not leaving uh, seats open. We need to pack it in. Elbow room is not really optional here. That's a big difference. Thank you for your cooperation. Be patient. We appreciate you coming to Momo Oh, this These is really going to be so much fun, you guys. This is going to be awesome. We now have dice up here. <laughs> That means games of chance are possible. Or I'll eat them. <laughs> Keep them away from me. They look tasty. They look like they're like really sparkly. I would like to remind everybody that dice are a choking hazard. Do not eat them. <laughs> yes, this is true. Thank you for the dice. <laughs> We're just patiently waiting for the rest of the folks to sit in. Oh, we just okay. The this, this is what we're waiting for. Is there's key, there's people who are coming in. I'm I'm I just got off a plane. This is the best I got it's right true. now. We still have technically six minutes until the panel starts. Oh so. well, that's that's cool. We can talk amongst ourselves then. That's not bad. It's all right. It's all that's right. Not bad. You get to reroll the ones though Average. if it's. Uh, right. You get to roll ones if it's elemental damage. Hey. Rerolling that one. Hey. That's respectable. That's all right. That's, that's, that's above that's average. Stand, uh, it's pretty average. <laughs> Numerically. Okay. Oh, my God. oh, okay. That, okay, mind. there you go. There you go. All right, what? everybody. We're going to get started. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Very good. I get two? I thought it was higher. Are my panelists ready? No, no, we're just gonna... <laughs> yes, you ready? Yeah. Yes. 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 Excellent. Okay, yes. let's do this. Oh no, now, okay. you're, now you're all just anonymous shades. I know. This panel just got really creepy from our perspective and I like it. Yeah. It's, it feels it's like we're being like judged. It's like the Rocky Horror Picture yeah. Show now. It's, it's like just, a, just really disturbing. This it's is a kind really of like, low budget VR horror game happening yeah. right now. It's like the ghosts of our ancestors judging us in the final moments. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what do you will of me, counsel? <laughs> what do you want? Oh my gosh. All right, anyway, sorry. Okay, it's your okay. panel. No, it's all good. You guys are hilarious, and I love you. Okay, <laughs> hey. welcome everybody to Critical Role. We you are, of course, Talison Jaffe, our fantastic mod moderator. Yes, I am Jaffe. Hello, welcome. I'm actually, <laughs> my name's Hannah, and I will be moderating for all of you lovelies. Um, <laughs> I cannot give these guys a proper introduction because you all know them and you love them, so I'm going to let them do it because they're fantastic. Hi, Matt. <laughs> oh my God, Brian Foster, who is apparently supposed to be on this panel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Talison told you you weren't supposed to be on this panel and there I didn't have anything chair. to do with it. Oh. One of them is broken. Just make sure that's not the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Feels good to me, guys. Yeah, all right. <laughs> this is really funny. All right, so you are? <laughs> oh, I'm Marish Array. Um, <laughs> A.K.A. Keyleth. A.K.A. Hashtag Thanks Keyleth. A.K.A. AKA Golden Gods. Yeah. <laughs> They're basically gods. 
Uh, I'm Talison Jaffe, uh, a.k.a. Percy, uh, Percy DeRolo III. Uh, AKA the, the port for all ships, apparently, which is very exciting. <laughs> Hello. I am the host. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's true. I'm with the most. <laughs> AKA the grandma killer. That's not, that's not good. <laughs> no, uh, I'm Brian. We're not, we're not with an eye. I'm Brian with an eye. <laughs> Well, it's fantastic to have all of you here. Happy to be I'm here. Thanks. Very happy that you're here. Um, so let's just kick it off. Let's just jump into it. Okay. So for everybody that wants to be a voice actor here, um, I thought I'd throw out the question, how would you guys normally prepare for a voice acting role? Pre prepare for a voice acting role? Um, you would, uh, I would recommend reading the lines <laughs> for the audition. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Do you charge for this great advice? <laughs> <laughs> Reading a script? Okay. We can, we can work out classes, Brian. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, uh, and I've emphasized this in other panels before, voice acting is 90% acting, 10% voice. And so for preparation, not just for the, for the industry in general, but for, for any sort of character role that comes your way, is prepare it like you would any character. You want to read the dialogue, get a feel for the personality, um, take whatever information is given to you about that character, and then extrapolate from that to help flesh them out. A lot of times you get, you know, he's 25 to 35, his parents died in a fire, uses a machine gun. Blood type B. Yeah, every now and then you, know, you get blood type. I'm, I'm not kidding. Yeah, or the guy no, you'd really. like to have a beer with. Yeah. J Japan's what really does that mean? Japan's really into their blood types, and America's really into their have yeah. a beer with. Beer with, yeah. yeah. I um, like to have a beer with. So yeah, I mean, my, my, at least my, my first thing would be to make sure that you take the time to try and create a character um, that feels fleshed out to you, and don't feel too beholden to what little information you have there. Just find something that you feel is honest in the performance. I love that it feels like you're calling the World Series right now. From everyone, like and the, the reverberation. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. how is it? Is it hard to understand us, or is it relatively okay? Good. It's just us. I think we have. We're this. hearing it. Not, yeah. Yeah. It's slapping oh. back against the back it's wall. Amazing. Welcome, it's... welcome, welcome to Wednesday WrestleMania. <laughs> it's what it feels like. <laughs> that's a that's a different panel. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, that that's panel. after yeah. this. So, Bri Brian, what, how do you prepare for a voiceover role? Well, I prepare, <laughs> typically, I stretch. <laughs> I call Steve Bloom, and I say, hey, man, before I, I audition for this part you're going to get. <laughs> no, I'm not a voice actor, but I do hang out with a lot of them. And I can tell you that they do prepare a lot of stuff. <laughs> and the people on this stage, I think Talis and Jaffe should be playing every villain in every video game. <laughs> yes. And I've been saying that, I've been saying that for years, and I will continue to say that until the video game makers <laughs> will listen to me. <laughs> It's true, though. There's, there's been a few times that me as a very supportive girlfriend, Matt's gotten sides in, and I've been like, oh, babe, you just Talison. Just hand that yeah. over to just, Talison. Mm. Yeah. Well, no, I'm like hearing him times. read through the, the wall, and I'm like, it's not... No. It's not good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just no, give it to Talison. I've, I've gone in... I've been requested to give in an audition on roles, and I've told them in the room... I mean, thanks, but you should really get Talison it's, in for this. this. I, I will actually say, this is an industry where occasionally some of us go into to read for something. We're like, are you having these five people in for this? I know I just read for this, but you should really have these, these other people, five people yeah. read this, because I'm sure what I did was great and all, but like, this is a Patrick Seitz role. What are you doing? Yeah. Come on, <laughs> come on, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. My, yeah. my favorite is when I get a voice reference and it's Laura Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, this happens all the time. And I'm like, oh, damn do it. you want me to text her? I, 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 <laughs> Yo, you free Bef before, Wednesday? Before I, my, my, my voice just recently like cracked a little bit. So before that, I used to- Puberty. Yeah. <laughs> second, second We were puberty. all waiting. It's crazy. Second uh, puberty. Second puberty. We were uh, all waiting. I used to get paired up with Liam a lot. And now it's, 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 that's stopped happening, which is really nice. You so. always have people that are- Yeah, who you're kind against. of, yeah. you're right there with. Me and Courtney Taylor. 
Yeah. Every time. Yeah. yeah. I can you that, you yeah. mentioned hearing voice matches uh, of Valor Bailey. I remember when they they did the the re- live action Resident Evil movie that had Leon in it, and they sent out because apparently the actor who played him had a French accent, and so they wanted someone to dub his lines and sound like Leon. So they sent out an audition to try and match the sound, yes. and the audio clip was me. I was the reference, Whoa. and I and I didn't book Fuck it. it. <laughs> Whoa. So I'm genuinely no. really curious to meet whoever it was that did a better me than me. Yeah. No. Not, I haven't found him yet, but one day. No one did it. Yeah. So I hope that helped you learn some tips and tricks about voiceover. Yes, the most about random voiceover. voiceover. Yeah, I mean, uh, the real tips that you can get are just buy um, uh, voiceover voice actor by Yuri, Yuri Lowenthal and Tara Platt. Um, go to How to Become a Voice Actor by how, how, D. How Bradley Baker. Actor. How to be a voice actor. How to be a voice actor.com by D. Bradley Baker. Great site. Find um, any panel that Fred Tatashore is at this week. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go talk to Fred. He's here. Um, but yeah, course. there's so many resources out there that are r- written down and probably way more eloquent than what we could tell you right now. Yeah, no, your, your, Yuri's book is great. It's yes. very helpful. Yeah. These, these title cards are more eloquent than any of us right now. So. <laughs> Voice good, panel panel hard. Dang. Hi. <laughs> Flight long. Plane long. Plane yeah. long. Uh. Uh. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Y'all are way too modest. Like, geez, come on now. Um, so I know you guys <laughs> off of that, I know you guys know how hard being in the industry is and not only being an actor, but also being a voice actor on top of that. Um, so I was wondering if you guys could talk to us about a little bit more about like what the harder parts of being in the industry are, like what struggles have you had? Yeah. Who wants to jump off on that one? Oh, wow. I mean, honestly, being a voiceover actor is the easier parts of being in the industry. <laughs> At this point, uh. Uh, on camera is scary and I, I, I used to describe it to my friends with real jobs as it's it's trading the illusion of security for the illusion of freedom mm. um, yeah. that's a really good, yeah. way, of really putting good it. way of putting it I, it's, you can either have the illusion that you have a job that's not going anywhere that's going to be there for the rest of your life or you can uh, have the illusion that you can do anything you like and leave uh, your house and go on vacation anytime you like because you don't have a boss you're your own boss and your office is just your house and your bedroom. Yeah, and there's no reason to ever leave your bedroom because mm-hmm. you've got work to do. And sleep is really a bad use of it in your, your office, your really. Yeah. Why are you sleeping? <laughs> Weekends are for people who have real jobs. What do you, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's go to the bourgeois pig. To we the went bourgeois there, pig. Guys. <laughs> we went there. <laughs> this will fix everything. Hey, say the first part again for those of us that are going to put it in the yearbook. What was the first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the first? Uh, the thing illusion of security versus the illusion of freedom. Yeah. Yeah. You trade trade yeah. the illusion yeah. of security for the illusion of freedom. That's cool. So what we tell everybody is when you go to interview for your job and you do it like once and you're like, whew, awesome. We do that every day. Yeah. I'm every time you audition, it's basically the equivalent of interviewing for your job and trying to convince people why you should be there. And the reality is, is that you shouldn't. No one should no be. One it's should. a desert. No. It's so there's a serious water shortage, you guys. No one yeah, should no. be there. <laughs> my, 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 the phrase I hear in my head every time I, I walk out of a booth is, well, this is it. That's the last job you're ever going to book. It's been a great run. You've done very well, but it's all over now. That's it's, just Sam telling time, you that after to, you yeah, leave no, the Sam booth. Sitting there talking to me. <laughs> it's time to go back and work at the video store. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm a writer, so I'm, I'm not subject to the persecutions of the voice actors, but <laughs> I am. Uh, you get a discount coffee at the bourgeois. I get, I do get discount coffee. There. Well, it, well, I'm not allowed there anymore, but <laughs> at some places I get a discount. It's nice so they can look at you and you're like, oh, writer, okay, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Go. They're like, that's a writer's beard. Yeah. <laughs> and then I take that's, it that's off. Not a, and then the beard they... of anybody who actually has to like, you know, audition yeah. or anything. Yeah, or yeah, be anywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, but I think the bi- like the the business is is the same regardless of which sort of uh, you know genre you're in. If you're an actor, if you're a writer, if you're a producer, whatever you're trying to, yeah, it's true. You're you're trying to make you're trying to you're trying to tell a story and you're trying to make a point and you're trying to be relevant while at the same time trying to be yourself. And so you're in a place where there's thousands and millions of people trying that at the same time, and so you're hoping something cuts through. Critical Role is an incredible example of something that has no reason to have cut through the way it did. Nope. None. Like, really, it doesn't. We talk about that all the time, but it has resonated (laughs) with people in a way that I think good art 
connects us to and makes us have an intimate connection with enough to where we're willing to, you know, people, some people drove and flew a long way just to meet the three of you guys. <laughs> and you. It's crazy. Dude, people so are yeah, cosplaying like as Brian Wayne Foster. Okay. There are cats. You have cosplayers. There are cats now. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Well, it, it, I, I, Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, do you, I, I feel like every artist or every creative wakes up one morning and goes and ha starts having this existential crisis of, oh, my God, everything that I do for a living is just made up. I just make up shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, nothing is real. What am I doing? Why are people paying me for shit? This we, is all a bad idea. We, we all spent like six months just saying, what is happening? What is happening? Yeah, no, this wait, is weird. Why are people to, watching the shit? To work in the entertainment industry and, and be a somewhat sane human being means you're a professional uh, harbinger of the imposter syndrome. <laughs> It is, mm -hmm. it is a perpetual process, and, and in a weird way, it's kind of healthy. <laughs> or no, you, you, have, you have such a solid respect for, like, I, I was directing Erica Limbeck in some, in some show uh, ages ago, and we had this, this really fascinating, interesting professor of, like, um, I want to say, like, of like oh, he, oh, God, he was, like, was it, like, med medieval language or something he was in? And he was like, well, you've worked hard and to get where you are, and, and Erica, bless her, was like, no. No, there are people who've worked way harder than me that have nothing. I'm just really lucky. He's like, don't sell yourself short. She says, no, you don't understand how this works. <laughs> yeah. There's a hundred people just as talented as me. I'm just really lucky. Four of them in the parking lot with knives yeah, right, right now. now. <laughs> Can Maybe I ride home with you? Come Barbie. <laughs> That's you have so a really funny. healthy respect for luck in this industry yeah. because it's such a... I yeah. tell people that I slept my way all the way to the bottom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what you mean is you napped all your way to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Literally. Literally. Yeah. I did. Now, to, to, on, 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 a, on a legitimate point, too, it is, an, in, it is a job, especially for voiceover, that is, that is built on perpetual rejection. Oh, yeah. It is a career that, that, that you, you do the work before it's decided whether or not you're paid for it. Mm. You know, it's and, and to play off what you were saying before, it's like working. You're doing your two weeks at your job, and then you have to re-interview every two weeks for your paycheck after doing the work. And so it has to be a passion. It has to be a passion. You have to do it not to make it an extravagant living, because we'll we all profess that's not going to happen usually. Um, you know, you might be able to get by if you work really hard, but you know, we each of us have spent countless years in squalor trying to make something like this happen. Oh yeah. Um, so you have to be able to push through the rejection. Do it for the art of it. Do it for the love of it, and and m maintain being a good person. And because voiceover, more than any other form of entertainment, does not really allow for douchebags to no, persevere. We're a, we're a small <laughs> community. So, yeah. yeah, we, we all we, yeah. Eat, we eat douchebags for breakfast. I would not quote that. Yeah. I would. <laughs> it's weird that they come in breakfast cereal form now. Mm. Actually, that's kind of a little. I'm going to sit with that one for a little bit. That's yeah. that's the yearbook quote it's for the nice panel to take home with you guys. Yeah. The cereal. <laughs> So yeah. Douchebags <laughs> for breakfast. So the answer the answer to that question is we eat douchebags for breakfast. Okay. <laughs> that that will be accepted. Um yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting you guys talk about like how you got your start and how um how to word it. How difficult it is to break in. And Matt, I know that you started in high school, correct? Um, right to the tail end of high school. Right. So what what was that like still trying to get a GED and working and figuring that out what was that oh like? it sucked <laughs> <laughs> well to, to put into context here like i i, I wasn't considering pursuing voiceover when i was in high school i i was just getting into theater heavily and i was enjoying the performing aspect of it but i was going to go into animation you know i grew up watching loving cartoons i wanted to to be an illustrator an animator mm -hmm. and right as i was getting to the end of my high school years i realized i don't know it's scary i don't want it's not, not it's, I, I that was not something i was as passionate about as i thought i was and that also requires passion in the face of rejection. Um, so I had an opportunity through a, a strange connection to do background voices in one series. Like, when I say background voices, I don't mean like, you know, you got to be a side character. This was like, guy's head who explodes number seven. <laughs> you know, or guy whose car gets stolen and goes, no! <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing. Was and that Mag-8? Uh, that, that, that was a Mag-8. Oh, that, that was for the Fist of the North Star animated series. Oh my god. I got to be one of those guys whose head exploded. Um, but it was just enough of a taste for me to go like, oh, okay, this this is a thing, and maybe this is this connection will help me. Didn't it all? But <laughs> but it was enough of a taste to really kind of let me start focusing on that. And so for me, a lot of, a lot of my time after that was just thinking, well, what can I do to maybe someday pursue this? So I began to continue doing theater, 
taking classes, learning, uh, trying to just better myself. And then it was, wasn't until like eight years later, back in about 2008 or so, that I finally quit my job and was like, let me take this full on and fail or succeed. You know, I, I, I prefer not to live with regret. I think regret's a terrible thing. And I'd rather fail and know that I try to move on to the next endeavor than spend the rest of my life going, what if, you know? Right. That must have been so scary, though. Oh, it was really scary. Yeah. I, I, I downsized my entire life. I lived, in, I had to go down to this tiny studio apartment and Marisha saw it when we first met. It was a, it was a, a I had a kitsch. We, we still have friends who live in that apartment, actually. That, that apartment do, yeah. is still in our, fr in our friend's family. Yeah. We have like, <laughs> This You'll get out of here one day. The, the sisterhood of the traveling box. Yeah, <laughs> is what it has become. It's it's, it's a pretty depressing. Place. Uh, yeah, but 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 you know, it was, it was doing temp work and jo odd jobs off Craigslist and whatever I could to try and pay the bills. Working as a barista at a Barnes Noble cafe for a long time, working in warehouses, stocking shelves, whatever I could do to allow me the time to continue to pursue this. And it took a lot of years, and a lot of years of of just busting my ass and trying to make it happen and slowly again to get traction but it's it wasn't an easy climb yeah i bet um okay so for the rest of the panel let's let's hear it what was you guys moment i look i know <laughs> I the sound of ashley people laughing a picture ashley asked for a picture it's i a sent a picture, picture. But it's a it's no the back of matt's something? head looks beautiful thank you <laughs> i i just i i think it's great that i can i can distinctly sense the type of laughter that is evoked by Brian Foster. <laughs> <laughs> Just an observation. Anyway, sorry, continue with No, wish. that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> um, so, Miss Marcia, tell us, so how did you get your star? What was your lucky moment? <laughs> oh, Maybe no. Story. Maybe another story. Oh, yes. Oh, no, this is a long story, you guys. I Good. don't know. They're like, are there any with singular lucky breaks? For some people, but not really for us. I don't think. Weren't you the cash me outside? How about that girl? <laughs> 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 That's what I told them at the airport to try and get us upgraded to first class, but they didn't. <laughs> they Googled her and they were like, that, that ain't. Work. Yeah. You always bet on Mercer. Always bet yeah, on him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, no, I mean, I, I feel like my career and my success, when you look back in that introspective timeline of your life, and it was all these kind of little nudges and hints um, just kind of pushing me into the same direction, and just these weird little tra trail of events that just kind of happened that led me one thing to another. Um, I am obnoxiously tenacious like maybe to a damaging degree sometimes. Um, goldfish <laughs> is very indicative of that. Yeah. Like I, I hate hearing no for an answer. That's, shouldn't say that out loud either. That's probably damaging. Um, but yeah, I, I, I turn into that toddler who's like four years old that's like, well, why can't I do this? Why? And I was like, well, you know, it's because if you jump off a cliff, you'll die. And why? Well, you know, to, to gravity and terminal. Why? And I just keep asking why until something happens. Um, or conversely, you can't play this because you're a woman. Why? why? <laughs> you can't do this job as good because you're a woman. You, why? why? And you just keep pushing just that until eventually they have, don't have an answer for it. Yeah, kind of, kind of break people down with their own defense. Yeah, <laughs> um, you, you, you always remind me of the, of the Jason C. Lee character from Mallrats. This <laughs> is just like I, I feel like I've been in so many rooms that started with just you think because a chick reads comic books, you think she can't start some shit? I'll <laughs> yeah. kick your ass! Like, whoa, no! Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run! Yeah, it's true. There has no. been like wait, one, maybe two times that Talison has been to me like, leave, Marisha, go out. <laughs> Before you stab someone. Yeah. 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 Not. Yeah. Not. Never because. Yeah. You're. You're. You're never the one. It's. It's always the. I don't want to go. Explain. I don't want to explain this to the cops later. Please. Yeah. <laughs> please. No. We want yeah. to hear that story. What's that story? Oh God. <laughs> that story? There's too there's many. There's a few too of many them. stories. There's a few <laughs> too of many them. stories. Um, but no. I don't know. There's. There's been. Keyless is, isn't the only one who's been to yeah, jail. A, a strong <laughs> perseverance and hard-headedness and just on, honestly just kind of constantly pursuing what made me happy and what I knew I wanted to do and that kind of ended up 
putting me at a crossroads of acting in nerddom, and it was kind of perfect. Like that's. I will say yeah. passion though, because Marisha, if even if she's just asked to help participate in something or help like step in to you know assist with something tiny, she treats it as if it was an idea she came up with, and it was her. Like she she treats it with that same amount of passion, and I'll say that's why. Now she's out, she's, you know, becoming more famous than all of us, and she'll forget us soon. <laughs> well, you, yeah. That's Me, a, yeah, first. No, you, you obviously, yeah. you're the yeah, first to the go. The new guy has got to go first. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. Yeah. I'll invoice you later. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Tell us. Best 50 bucks I ever spent. Uh, <laughs> I can think of several examples that are probably not true on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Some good stories. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I beg to differ. Uh, <laughs> um, Us jet lagged, it turns we out, so is jet -lagged. awesome. So, I'm so amused. <laughs> Let's do this um, every day. This is before drinking, guys. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> have a moment. I didn't really. I, you didn't have a chance to. You were thrust into the industry as a child. I was, I was born sort of into this. Uh, I worked as a child actor. I, I, had a, I was in the union before I was one years old. I had a SAG card. I was kind of doing this solidly until the age of approximately 13, working on camera, and then... You could I, have been Boss Baby. I could have been Boss Baby. <laughs> yeah, never gonna happen, no. Um, <laughs> boss Baby. Uh, but I was, I was even, even back then, I was, I was really uh, um, interested in Japanese cartoons and Japanese animation, which what, hadn't really become a thing yet, but I was really into it, and I was excited by the notion that they were gonna be dubbing them into English, and, we were still figuring out how that worked, and, and because I was in the industry and, and, and working all the time, I sort of came at it in that direction of, well, how are we going to do this? What kind of acting are you going to use for this? How, what kind of actors are you going to get? Like, this is, this is interesting. And, and from having that perspective, I, I managed to interest enough people who find that, found that amusing to sort of start a, start a, a, a career in that direction. And at that time, I was I was going to stop doing on camera work because uh, Baywatch. Well, the Baywatch story, which is definitely is definitely a story. Tell yes. the story. Tell the story. I'll tell the Baywatch story. Tell, okay. tell the Just, story. It's, it's, not, it's not a long Towson. story. It's not a long story. Towson, tell the Baywatch story. I'm telling, I'm telling the Baywatch. Tell the Baywatch story. I was, I was 13 years old. I had the worst haircut on earth because it's the haircut you have to. If you're an actor, you have to have actor hair. <laughs> that is, I'm not kidding, uh, you can't mess with your hair because you have a photo and when they call you in, you gotta look like that photo and that photo has to have just enough hair that if they wanna do something to it, they can, mm -hmm. but not so little hair that you're stuck with the haircut you have. So you have to have that bowl haircut, boyish thing that's awful and you have to have it all the time until they wanna mess with it. Yeah. Uh, photos are expensive. Photos are expensive and change you can't hair, change you them up all the time. Change your hair, you have to take more pictures, yeah. And that, and that makes your agent angry. And, uh, yep. What I, do you think Baywatch wanted to do with that 13-year-old Talison's hair? So uh, I was irritated. I had, a, I had a headache and they had given, I had to go to an audition for Baywatch for a, a, some kid who was upset because his grandfather died and, the, and the, like, the dialogue was so bad. It was so bad. <laughs> like, the dialogue was so bad that the 13-year-old boy was going, you don't really expect me to read this and take this seriously, right? <laughs> this is so stupid. Uh, and this is weird, a little creepy, and like, there's a whole shower thing that I don't, oh God, this is dry. And I was laughing so much and giggling through this serious grandpa's dead scene that my dad, at trying to be like, encouraging in his way was like, well, if you can't take this seriously, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. <laughs> I should not be put in a room with 11 other kids whose lives depend on this shit. That's a terrible idea. There are people who want this so bad. Call my agent, I quit, I'm done. I'm going in my room, I'm, I'm done. I'm uh, grounded myself. I, and like, <laughs> I, no, and like, I was like instantly like, I'm no more working out I was like, I want to stop working out. Like being a 13 year old who like works out is weird. I want weird hair, I want to have fun. And I found out that voice acting means I don't have to work out and I can have weird hair and keep acting. <laughs> it's basically, that was literally it. It was like, well, it's just, I can have all the fun I had before except I don't have to do all, any of the hard shit. Uh, <laughs> that makes it sound so cheap though. It's, it wasn't that easy. No. It wasn't that easy, but that's a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Surrounding yourself with creative people who are doing good work it does help. Yeah. And seriously, on camera shit is terrifying. Yeah, it's it's hard. I still do it every now and then to remind myself. I mean, yeah. That it's terrifying. But <laughs> it's like touching the burner of your stove like, oh yeah. yeah that, that hurts. hurts. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, mom was right. Mom was right. Yeah. That's a no no. Well, like, you came in. You came in while we had that. Like we were just starting to form this great group of people who are constantly like we don't hang out and, and watch movies together. Ever. We hang out and make YouTube videos. <laughs> like. The, the people in our group are like oh always doing Oh my God, that's our friends. Shit. Oh no, my God. No, it is. We are, we are like, we don't hang out together. We're like, hey, do you want to come over and help me produce this like short film that I'm in, uh, putting into it? Like a, yeah, <laughs> sure. You need like what, the actors? Do you need a PA? What do you need? Marisha, we're not Vine stars. That's not what he's saying. No. no. Said. Not, we're uh, web trying. stars. We're, yeah. We're, that's we're, different. No. we're on we're, the internet. <laughs> I reject this notion. Those two yeah. words don't go together. Matt, <laughs> Matt, we're we're Twitch famous, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like. I just want to like point out that's like the cruise ships of the internet, right there. Yeah, it's just water. <laughs> Why is it just water? Because that's all you've earned. Hey, that's do you want all candy? you've earned. <laughs> That's all you've earned. Oh, jeez. Okay, I got it. Hey! Proper wow. transfer for YouTube. You guys back. Back. Yeah. Let's make you inspired and happy again. <laughs> all right. if, it, if it gets bad, just clap loudly towards us. Yeah. Oh, that went off too long. Or you, get, you also get one of those like uh, animal training click yeah, like things. A shocker yeah. Thing just, like, or taser. Happy. Taser works. That's good. <laughs> Little extreme, but functional. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to bring it back up again, yeah. let's talk about what your inspirations are, guys. Mm. Let's let's talk about who who keeps you going. <laughs> oh. But yeah. 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 Johnny Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Jim to his friends. Yeah. 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 I was saying that for Marisha. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, and uh, I mean, as far as as far as just personal life and stuff, like friends, family. You know, yeah. the, the family we have and the family we choose uh, it makes a really, really big difference, especially in in our city and our the family. We have time for these. The family we have time for these days. <laughs> the family we make YouTube videos with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it's those are the biggest points of inspiration, keeping us together and, and not going crazy in this crazy, crazy world. Like, it's crazier every day. Um, but, I mean, as far as, like, career stuff, what, what, what other inspirations do you guys pull from? Like, what, what other people or what other types of art do you draw from? Um, I, have, I have other creative friends that, that or I have especially older friends that are, like, the people I would like to grow up to be, which mm -hmm. you know is a horrifying thing to say in your 40s. Uh, <laughs> I said it. Uh, it's and then I've got. Uh, it's weird. It's it's the people who are older than me that have kind of found a place that appears to be comfortable, although I'm sure it's not. And then the friends of mine who are younger, who are starting out, who remind me that I have to work hard because mm -hmm. they're going to devour me alive and take all my jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Bless them. <laughs> You're so insightful. Eh, it's mostly <laughs> jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Savage. Papa Savage. <laughs> but yeah. Right? Oh, uh, man. I said, I think on the show one night, I said, you know, I find surround yourself with people that want to leave the world better than you found it. And I think that, you know, with these guys, I've known these guys for a long, long, long time. Um, Talison's the only person I met after the home game started, yep. but I knew you guys back in the cut. But like, <laughs> for me, I as I've gotten older too. I'm 34. I'm not old, but as I've gotten older, I'm find myself surrounding myself with people that are, you know, not just motivated but are passionate. Like I was saying earlier, and people that are helping each other, and in, in LA and. New York and places that are creative, they're also very competitive. And even though a lot of these guys are in the same industry, nobody really competes and nobody really, you know, there's a, we seem to celebrate successes and we mourn, you know, losses and together and it's a family that you choose, yeah. So to me that, that really inspires me. Um, plus uh, I like to read a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, I mean, that's a good point, though. It, it's a competitive that's there but inspiring and you're kind of always rooting for the home team. Yeah, it's there's not a, yeah, a selfish it's a, competitive. It's iron sharpening iron, yeah, yeah, rather than, you know, either walking all over each other or, you know, kind of secretly going, uh, mm. you know, stab mm. that bitch in the back. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like you and Laura do behind each other's oh, back Oh, yeah, all totally. The time. Well, you know. <laughs> she's That's where I got that know. idea from. Yeah. I, th I think <laughs> when she dies, I get the other half of my soul, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't oh, know. That explains so much. What you oh want to Who say? couldn't that be said about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, I, I think storytelling is very important on a, on a basic scale. When you consider both the, the, you know, the, the classic tribal elders around the fire telling the stories and myths to the young, we as a people, as, 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 a, as a species, thrive on being inspired by stories from those that came before us. And that's been as long as we've had speech. Um, so as, as each generation and every you know, epoch comes by and that transitions into media that we have nowadays, storytelling is even more important because that's what inspires us to want to create, to make the world better, to make ourselves better, to, to see a character in a story or a TV series or a video game that we want to aspire to be more like and make adjustments in our life to try and be more like that character, to feel more fulfilled and you know, ultimately a better person. Um, I found a lot of that inspiration through, and it sounds so hackneyed just because of what we're here for partially, but Dungeons and Dragons and role-playing games were such an inspiration to me because it gave me a safe space to discover myself and a safe space to be, to step into the shoes of people that weren't like me, that I could create or come to understand different experiences and perspectives. And through our show and what we're seeing now, this resurgence of tabletop gaming, it's one of the few forms of media that people can be inspired by and then turn around the next day and go create themselves. Mm. Wow, yeah. And that to me is incredible. I think it's, it's amazing. You know, if, if, if anything from our, what our game has done, our, our stream, show, whatever you want to call it, it's our game, but um, is seeing so many of you guys go out there and create your own adventures and send us pictures of your game groups and tell us stories of the things that your parties have done. And to me, what inspires me to do anything that I do is, is the hope that whatever art I create inspires other people to create better art in the future. So, yeah. It does. Word. Mm. <laughs> it does, Matt. <laughs> so you guys have any good book suggestions? <laughs> House of Leaves. House of Leaves, a really good horror book. You should read it if you like horror books. Mm. Read it at night with your lights low. <laughs> Trust me. Oh, book, book, recommendations? book recommendations? City of Thieves by David Benioff. He's the creator of the Game of Thrones and the writer of the Game of Thrones TV show. He also wrote a book called The 25th Hour, which is incredible. And he wrote a book called When the Nines Roll Over. Okay, I'm recommending all three of his books. But anyway, if you like Game of Thrones, they're nothing, it's nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> if, but you'll like it. But yeah, City of Thieves, it's an incredible book. Uh, the, ga the video game The Last of Us was... Uh, uh, you know, Neil tells me 95% inspired by that book. So it's a really, really incredible book. So that's my recommendation. Cool. I also wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> that one's pretty cheap on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, shameless plug. You brought it up. What? What's it called? Yeah, no, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a published. Uh, I'm a published poet. I've made tens of dollars as a poet. Damn. <laughs> it's pretty dope. My book is called Blackened White. Brian W. Foster. It's on Amazon. It's a collection of essays, short stories. I have another one coming out next year because it'll be 10 years that I've been in Los Angeles. And it's called Poison Chalices, Reflections on an Almost Sober Decade in L.A. Next, <laughs> next year is your 10 years? Next, next year is my 10 my years. Ten year. Oh wow! Yeah, man. Should we June. should we buy like should we leave should we all leave? Should we yeah just be like? <laughs> Is that you're supposed to, to go? Done like, with uh, this? Yeah, shit. How does it work? I believe, out. I believe you get a convertible and head to Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do I with with the the suitcase, a suitcase a suitcase full of drugs and the yeah? Do I automatically get my uh, games. I automatically yeah. get my Jeep Wrangler right? Like that just comes. Yeah. With my tin no. You're in to sandals. Vegas. Yeah, in you sandals, can only drive yeah. it in sandals. Yeah, it's kind and of I rule. automatically get a mar medical marijuana card just with your tenure anniversary. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mail it to you. Yeah, yeah. 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 
<laughs> it comes with your car registration. Yeah. Hawaiian Allison. shirts. Uh, Talison, book recommendations. I, I just I just cleaned up my bookshelf, so I'm I'm rereading a bunch of nonfiction that nobody wants to read. But uh, um, the, the the last fiction book I reread uh, Terry Southern's uh, uh, Magic Christian because I was using it for something I was writing. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's which a good one. I love madly. So I really like like weird '60s pop. I've kind of I've got a thing for it. So. I, That's a great I, book. I'm re I guess I'm gonna go off the fiction ramp and since Please, we were kind of awful. talking about um, creativity and how to inspire that, I've been reading through Creativity Inc., which mm. is written by Ed Catmull, who was one of the founders of Pixar. And um, yeah, he talks about kind of a, like harboring a creative environment and helping the creative flow in a workspace. And yeah, it's just really good for anyone who's really, it's good for anyone. What's it's a good, good, what's a takeaway from it so far? Like what? It, what's other something than, that than babies and cars stuck out? <laughs> you give patent. You give like those patent style speeches in the office every now and then, where you just stand up and start. It's like there's a story in this book. You gotta know. And like we're just we all sit and like Very listen for a minute. Story time. Um, Everyone that gets one's on beanbag chairs. Dark, um, uh, I think just allowing creativity to flow and not extinguishing anyone's creative flame just because you think that your job title allows that that like you know it doesn't it could be a PA it could be a writer it could be someone in sales or marketing and anyone can have a creative a idea and I think we all have a responsibility to listen to those creativity those creative ideas regardless of where they are in the re chain regardless of where they are in a chain because yeah. anyone can have an amazing idea um, and I, I think a good leader will listen to all of those even if they decide to implement them or not. Then why have you shot down all my ideas for other shows? Well, your name's Brian Foster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Green, yeah, green is not a creative I wanted color. to have the show they, where yeah. they chase green, green wheels down the street. Color. Color. Huh. <laughs> you chase wheels down the street? Yeah, yeah, well, that. stop pitching porn and then maybe we'll talk. Look. It's VR, but it's an experimental form of. I, I know, VR. I know, but we'll it's talk. Back to the drawing board. Remote, to be That's fair, we are weird. in the valley. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Please. Um, I actually did want to ask: Have you guys ever had a role offered to you that made you feel very uncomfortable that you didn't want to do mm. that you had to say no to? Ever had a role that we felt uncomfortable and said no to? Part of your job as an actor, one of the first things they teach you if you're going to be an actor is that your job is to be very uncomfortable. Like, it's kind of, that's something that doesn't get said very often, is like, there's nothing that will kill your career faster than being like, I'm not comfortable playing that part. And they're like, okay, thank you. Depends on where you are, I mean, though. like, there are places and there are things, obviously, but like, I, I spent a chunk of my childhood being crying, being molested uh, for ABC after school specials. I mean, like. <laughs> Child's Cry with Peter Coyote, which you can find on the ABC afternoon. I'm not even kidding. Um, uh, it's, I think it has a new schedule. It's, it's probably findable on YouTube. And like, you can watch a whole courtroom scene where I'm crying and bawling, describing terrible things that a, that a baseball coach did. And what you're not seeing is like every 10 minutes they stop as that lawyer forgets his three words of dialogue. <laughs> well, I like. <sighs> I have been sobbing for 45 minutes, fucker. You just have to remember objection for <laughs> I'm nine. What is your damage? Well, like, well, like, there's, well, there's like the creepiest looking baseball coach who's just looking at me, going, "I'm so sorry, dude. I don't even know." <laughs> like, like, he's he's okay. What's he? Yeah, no, it's a whole. Talison. Yeah. You're my favorite person. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there are things that are like, but like, it, it part of your job is to be excited by the notion of doing something that's going to make you vulnerable, as long as it's the right kind of vulnerable. Yeah. Well, if, if it's a space that, if it's a, as, as a performer, as, as, as yeah. an actor, if it's a space that you want to explore because it is outside of your comfort zone and you want to kind of stretch those muscles, yes. Uh, I have had uh, radio spots that I read for and then didn't realize that the the ideologies or the political circumstances behind those pieces were I was very fervently against and then said like I'm good and turned those down and there there was one video game that I read for or I didn't read for I was about to read for I was sent the, I sent the audition 
they didn't set the sides. I was supposed to arrive and get the sides, and it was for a motion capture project. Um, the game ended up being canceled, thankfully. But I show up to it, they give me the sides of the character, I had a little bit of character background, and I start reading through the script, and it was just extremely racist, extremely offensive. Um, yeah, but I told you I was gonna do revisions. <laughs> Pick the first row. Sorry, please keep. Oh, Goddamn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and like, like, and I can see what you were going for, Brian. <laughs> but I, but I, but I felt the the methods of delivering those themes were a little too ham-fisted, and yeah. the point was lost. I so, get it. Uh, I get it. so I decided to to decline and not do go through with the audition. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I found a new gig anyway. Yeah, there, I guess I guess there are auditions that I just turn down because I'm like, no, yeah. I don't want to. I don't. But those are usually, yeah. If if it's not a story, I'm really behind. And yeah, that does happen. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a difference between like getting a script for the Scientology Center and being like, nah, I'm good. I always read the versus Scientology script. <laughs> Versus like an acting role, I though. Got my, yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. I got my dad on their mailing list when I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's messed up. I'm such a jerk. Unless he enjoyed it. <laughs> no, so he good. He still doesn't. <laughs> You're never off. I've never lost a role to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because I've never gotten. You're off a writer. The role. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did lose one to Elijah Wood, though. Well, no, I don't know what that means. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like him. I'm not saying like fuck that guy. I don't want that to get out there. I think he's cool, Frodo. You know, I mean, I, he's known for more than just uh, whatever. <laughs> so I think I worked with him. So I'm so, sound like Dan Harmon. Yeah. You are too much time. Yeah, you are starting to. to I'm starting to turn into a. <laughs> you spent too much time. <laughs> you <Yeah, laughs> turn, turn into a fat, you. drunk old man all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Your uh, white, older, drunk male is rubbing off. It's showing. Yeah. 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 I uh, know. Once again, that's, that's what it that's says the, on my badge, quote. actually. Yeah. For the panel. Yeah. White, older, drunk male. That's it. Right there on the badge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite character class. Uh. <laughs> is that in the campaign guide, Matt? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. find that on DM's Guild, I think. Yeah, yeah um, DM's Guild. You get advantage on constitution checks. Oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah. I good. bet. Disadvantage on wisdom, intelligence, yeah. and charisma. I bet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Any rolls that you've turned in? Uh, it's uh, what Talison said. Yeah. Next, yeah, question. next question. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, if you're okay with it, we're gonna do one more questions, one more question, and then we'll open it up for questions. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. As yeah. long as we could be able say, to see okay. the person to be fair, that they asked. May have all left. We can't <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah. Very. <laughs> true. I will ask that you guys keep it appropriate, please. You are all adults. I think. <laughs> Maybe, possibly. I thought she was talking to uh, us. A hundred percent. I was like, oh no. So, so it says a lot about us. By the end of the weekend, she will be. Yeah. At least we're self-aware. Can't say that we're not that. <laughs> All right. So, what's final question? Okay. Final question is: Is there any projects that you guys are working on or hope to be working on? that you could tell us a little bit about. Oh. Um. Um, actually, oh. this one, a few just came out that I can announce. Um, <laughs> I am super over dramatic and ridiculous and insane in the Friday the 13th video game that's coming out. What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, you can kill me so many ways. <laughs> so many ways to kill me. I am AJ in that game. Awesome. Um, when does yeah, it come so out? Silly. On um, Friday the thirteenth. Comes out on the Google. It comes out on Google it. <laughs> yeah. You think it came out today? Said of. Actually, that might is. That actually might be true because came I out did on have Friday the twenty sixth. <laughs> Kind of, kind yeah, of I did have people one, guys. tweeting at me about how they're like, I've, I've saved Marisha two times already. 
I gave her a security blanket and some hot chocolate. Like legit, that was someone's tweet. Well, you're, uh, yeah, you're like, thanks, uh, someone's going to come along and murder me yeah. with an axe. Yeah. I don't know why, but when you said that, I imagined like a wonderful game where you don't play as the people being killed in Friday the 13th. You play as like the EMTs, the EMTs that come up after the scene and just, just comfort the survivor. The true yeah. heroes. Press, press square yeah. to slowly rub their back as you ask them what's wrong. Oh, my you know? God. I would play that game. So I would, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Wow. It's got a dialogue tree. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is a DLC where you can bring like a, like a, a, a help dog to come over. <laughs> Therapy dog. Downloadable content therapy dog. Yeah, there we are. That's a, that's a, yeah. These are free, guys. You can come with it. Uh, I, I get, well, the big one for me was finally after, uh, after over a year of waiting, Injustice 2 finally came out. Yes. So that was, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So. I get to be Barry Allen the Flash. Oh my God. So that's really cool. You and Liam is reverse Flash in that scene that came out. I love, it's like it was awesome. the best thing ever. So like, the, like one of the guys who was like actually working on the animatic when I was in there, and he was like, "Do you, do you want to see what it's gonna?" Look? And he was he was oh, I was so del he was delighted. I was delighted. Everyone <laughs> so was good. delighted. We were <laughs> we were giggling like fourteen years. <laughs> oh, it's a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was it was great. Uh, it was a lot of fun to record. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, I'm deriving so much enjoyment from all of the posts in recent weeks about how everyone complaining that Deadshot is so overpowered in the game. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. Learn to zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, dang. Bam. Sorry. Uh, oh man, what, what, what? What other than injustice? I know. I, I can say I can't say uh, who I'm playing it, but I can say that I am in the uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two. Woo! Hype! I'm really excited about that. Hype! I have a fun character in that one. Um, let's see. What else can I talk about? It's, NDAs is a problem. Yeah, a lot you can. And like, I have like we, we all have like four chips in the back of our brains from like Warner yeah. Brothers, Come Blizzard. On. They can press the button any time, and we're done. <laughs> It's it's like a, it's like a, a remote battle royale scenario. It's pretty intense. And Wait, if you don't know what battle royale is, watch that movie. It's oh, great. No, no. Yes. The original Japanese one. Um, oh man. I mean, the perpetual joy that is Fire Emblem Heroes. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I that still is, play way too much. Which of. you're all welcome for Effie being a badass. Just yeah. pointing that out there. It rocks my world. No, she's yeah. she's one of the most dangerous uh, arena characters. Yeah. Feels with the, good. With Feels the proper good. inherent skills. I like that I get to do the, yeah, I'm getting to use the Wolverine voice more and more. It's really nice. Yeah. 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 yeah it is really nice. I yeah. know. It's, yeah. it's nice. <laughs> it's got a lot of trouble. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where I'm going with that. I don't either. I was <laughs> waiting. Right? I started, right yeah. You're doing so much cool shit, and you yeah, can't can say you any. I can't say shit. It sucks, man. <laughs> I can't man. say. I, I have this Wait, phone right him? here. You may and think I have we're like teasing this, him, but we're not. I have this picture of my lawyer, and I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just know that if he's not that he's, he's on FaceTime right yeah, now, he's like just, just, he's just going at you. <laughs> uh, Is I'll, he billing I'll for just that? Say God. that? I'll just say that uh, after you know I lost my job at the Two Bro Girls show doing security. <laughs> By the way, I can say this now: the show's been canceled. Neither of those girls were broke. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lie. No, but I have a new gig, yeah, but I can't, I can't talk about it, but I'll just say uh, I'm stoked, and when, when, when it is announced, you'll probably hear something about it. Yeah, it's really can cool. You, can you talk about Bobby's <laughs> About the album? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was a part of that, yeah. So if you guys know Logic, the rapper, he's uh, one of my best friends, and uh, my writing partner, um, so anyway, yeah, he just put out an album, and I was uh, a part of that process a little bit, and working on a lot of cool stuff with him and the next record already and stuff like that. So if you guys want to check it out, it's called Everybody. Oh, I had the shirt on earlier, but I took a shower because uh, and the shirt melted off. Everyone on the <laughs> yeah yeah resolvable shirt. Everyone on yeah. the plane uh, yeah. the, the the plane was like the stand. <laughs> Our That's journey here, friends, to see you was yeah. long, but we're glad to be here. That's what happens when you fly American. The plane was sticky. Yeah. The windows were sticky. The floor was sticky. It was like oh, uh. they had just filmed Neighbors 3. Does, does, it, 
inside does it, the cabin of the airplane. Does it ever occur to you that maybe it's just that you're really sticky, so everything you touch is sticky? <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't sticky. It was a sticky airplane. You know how some people are born with just, like, naturally moist hands? Like, what if I just had sticky, <laughs> like, everything just... A bit. But isn't there a... Isn't there a like Spider-Man, yeah, but like, isn't there a guy who just has like furry, sticky? I don't know if they, why do they gotta be furry, but like sticky hands. <laughs> you all right? Other than my dad, I think you're pretty good. At <laughs> well, all righty. Uh, do we want to open it up for questions now? On that note, um, yeah. I do have notes, guys. Before we jump in. Before we jump into it, she has notes. Oh, no, There's going to be a no, short quiz. Homework. Uh, can Studio I notes. Have everybody, just hold on one second. Um, so one thing, these guys are lovely, but they cannot stay for signings. I encourage you to check your Momocon app um, to see where they're going to be next. Follow them around like little birds. We have a, um, we have a few more signings. Also, at the end, please stay seated. This is for your safety. We want to get people out in an orderly fashion, not like cavemen or women, to not be sexist. Cave person. Um, so Respect. please stay seated. Um, cave person. Cave, cave, cave people. people. Cave people. Oh, tiny. <laughs> Sorry. I play that app. <laughs> chibi, chibi Overwatch? Chibi Overwatch. I would yeah. totally play Chibi Overwatch. Chibi Overwatch. Especially if I got loot boxes for it. <laughs> Choverwatch. All right. All right. Okay, so that's chibi all watch. the notes that I have. So Great. let's do some questions. All right. Uh, oh, there's already a... Yep. Can uh, hello. Can we bring the house lights? Yeah, can we bring, can we bring, yeah, can we bring house, house lights? Talks Machina in the dark. Can we get... Uh, yeah. So we can see our lovely people. The conviction the people. The conviction people the left land. half an hour ago. They're like, these like guys... Harder dirtish. No, we are doomed to a thousand more years of darkness, guys. Yeah, I mean, oh, wow. I guess we can go ahead and get started. Yeah, yeah. Just go ahead. Sorry. The man in the yeah, dark. Just tell us your name. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Daniel. Hey, How's hi, it going? Daniel? Hi, Daniel. How's the abyss? Yeah, it's nice. Oh. It's pretty nice. Hey! Hey! There we hi. go. Hi. So, I my see your first. Face now. Thank you. Uh, my first live stream was the Crucible fight with Grog. Oh, yeah. And. That's probably going to be ingrained in my mind for ever. Good. What are some of your most memorable moments from the show before the goldfish? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't remember much after. Yeah. First off, <laughs> I was really scared about that fight because I was like, oh, great, I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one with two bruisers. That's going to be great for people to watch and play. It's just two people. The rest of the party's like, all right. Oof. So I was really happy that, that Travis went with me on the narrative elements of that, and we turned it into a, a fun dynamic battle. That was the last time Ryan made, Ryan made popcorn. That was nice. Yeah. So yeah. awesome. It was really good popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, most memorable moments of the show. Uh, you guys go first. <laughs> uh, God, do I have to pick? Oh. Uh, so many. Um. Hell's, hell was great. I mean... <laughs> Uh, almost drowning underwater was great. I, I was gonna say the Kraken fight, Kraken Kraken fight was, was great. intense. Um, there's so cows. I was cows. <laughs> I'll never forget cows. I watched cows. Kev Deck. I'm yeah. so sorry for any of you in the audience that has not watched the show and right now is going, "What the hell are they talking about?" <laughs> cows. I'm just gonna keep yelling one word like random shit. Vargal. Kick, uh, <laughs> kicking and kicking Kavarn in the face was pretty dope. Yeah. Finally firing like that, that arrow into the orb was pretty great. From, yeah. from, a, dungeon, yeah. from a dungeon master yeah. standpoint, solid, from a dungeon master standpoint, I still thank you. Ten minute sign. Um, I there was something so weirdly frightening and satisfying and delightful, just spending so much time building up Iman and Taldore, and then in one <laughs> fell swoop, just <laughs> destroying yeah. the city. Oh man, like that a was kid with a cardboard box. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I recommend it sometime. <laughs> All right, what, what, you recommend someone spending thousands of hours creating a world and building it up and then destroying it? Isn't that what SimCity is? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. And isn't it fun? Hell yeah. <laughs> awesome. Lock them in the pool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's try, and we'll try and be quick because yes. there's a lot. Yeah, go ahead. What's your name? Next question. Hello, I'm Thomas. Hey, Hi, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. Um, I'm a, actually a sound designer and composer for games, so oh, cool. I actually understand, you know, the taxes and the the uh, the sticky airplanes and all oh, yeah. that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my question, uh, I guess, for you guys is, how do you um, 
How do you deal with monotony when it comes up in your professional life? And how do you try Monogamy? To... Monot... <laughs> it's LA, that man. too, but um, <laughs> monotony. Oh. Like when, when monotony. things just become uh, really repetitive, I guess, or r routine. Weirdly, I got to say that, that maybe this is a function of LA. I don't think I've had a repetitive day in 35 years or so. Like. We, you you also new. live a very unique plane of that's existence. Fair. Yeah, Talison, <laughs> you sleep in a different coffin every night. <laughs> what are you talking about? There's a curse. I, I get it. I, have yes. to do, I know. I've seen the clipboard. God, bring it up. Uh, change, for me, change of scenery. Um, self care is a very important thing in any creative field because it can be a very very soul crushing experience at times. Um, and the monotony in any job can become a very, very difficult thing to maintain. So you owe it to yourself when you feel that, that drudgery begin to take over a bit to, to walk away and, and force yourself to go to a space that's unfamiliar, a space that is different and forces you out of your comfort zone and you have to adjust, partially because it kind of shakes your system a bit, but you might end up discovering you know, a, a, a location or people or an environment that you never thought you'd enjoy before and that might unlock some interesting passions and and reinvigorate aspects of your life that you didn't you know, consider until that moment. Um, it's amazing what a change of scenery can do, even if it's just taking a walk if you have writer's block or you know, something along those lines, like just getting yourself out of that, that stagnant space that you found yourself in and just run in a different direction for a while. Yeah, there, there's just, just to quickly add to that, there, there's, a, there's information in the ether that surrounds us. There's, there's this uh, notion that life is designed by its very in, in its very DNA to be toil. Mm. And that the I notion of seven. pleasure is, is sort of a strange, <laughs> of any kind of delight or pleasure is, any, is, is sort of a strange aberration from the toil that life is supposed to be. I assure you this is not true. And we are built, at, you, are in, you are currently at a convention full of people enjoying themselves. And this is an important and necessary thing you're supposed to do every day in some, in some way. Toil is almost kind of the weird one, like, like really, know that you'll do better work if you're happy and enjoying yourself mm -hmm. any way you can. Mm. Yeah, and I would say fresh eyes, fresh ears. If you if you write, give it to somebody to read that uh, doesn't normally read the kind of stuff you write. If you make music, give it to somebody. You know, like get fresh ears and fresh eyes on whatever you create. Maybe somebody that wouldn't normally listen to it. It's good to get... Uh, it's good to get an outside perspective on something. I think it'll, it helps me creatively. Yeah. Sound design's nuts too. That's yeah, nice. sound yeah. especially. Yeah. yeah we might be giving you guys a call at some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As long as you're not with law enforcement, you can. We're more than. More than uh, <laughs> Is it a subpoena? <laughs> <laughs> Another yes. one. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> I know who you are now. <laughs> no. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Uh, hey, what's hi, your name? Hi, uh, be pleased. That's so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was at the, uh, the Charlie Bidu. Chung uh, panel, and she touched on this bit where directors would have, or say, they like, they give really weird descriptions of the kind of sound they were trying to get. Um, is there a time that you like? What's one moment that sticks out for you? Of strange yeah. script direction, strange script sound effect. If you want to give an example, that one cool. was with Taliesin <laughs> as the director. I do that a lot. <laughs> with me, that okay. I reference all the time, and that was. Um, Akiba's strip. Wh which 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 piece of it direction? It was um. I need you to attack like a cat person, like a half cat half person. <laughs> that sounds like me. And I need you to be incensed that as you're attacking, your clothes are being ripped off. That sounds like me. Because Japan. Because Japan. And so I was like. Did I say because Japan? Uh, I I think because Japan got dropped a few times. Yeah, that, if I recall, yeah, that was Japan. said several yeah. times during that game. And it kind of turned into like a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. good if I recall. Yeah, yeah. It, it was all right. It was fine. Yeah, that's a good one. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. I mean, we, we always, I mean, a lot of scripts get weird, interesting sound effect noises. My love, my, the things I love are when the scripts give, because you have especially if it's in a, a long row. You have the line of dialogue, and then next to it you have the, the, the direction that the writer has for the certain feel of the line. And I love the ones that are just so, why did you write that down? Where like the line is, thank you. And the descriptor is, like, 
thank you. <laughs> and you're like, oh! <laughs> Derp. That's Man. Whoever, who, who, whoever put that in there, Sam, Sam always Instagrams really funny ones because he's oh, yeah. a voice, he does <laughs> yeah. a lot of voice directing. And it'll say, like, person is on fire, and it says, person acting on fire. fire. Yeah. And it's like, oh, gotcha. I think just person on fire is enough. One like, why do they always <laughs> add the thing? It's like, you guys aren't dumb. I think you guys could probably look at that and go, oh, they need a person on fire. <laughs> One of my favorite ones, I think it was, um, Travis I think it was when, like for the old um, uh, Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront. And it was like, uh, this line where you're yelling, yelling, yelling. And then I got to a certain point and it was like, just more yelling. <laughs> <laughs> I remember taking a picture of that one. I was like, this is my job right now. Yeah. More yelling. Yeah. We'll, we'll text each other yeah. if they're really good. If yeah. they're really and good. I, yeah, if, if, if you're lucky ones. enough, uh, I've been in a couple shows where I've known the writers or friends with the writers on it, and so they'll leave things in the script for you every now and then. Yeah. They're like, I'm so sorry for this. <laughs> like apologizing for certain lines of dialogue or or they'll write lines in the script just to mess you up, and then they'll be like, "All right, now the real line is actually down here." And so I've, I've, I've That's had messed up. I've, I've yeah. had a couple times where I get to a line and be like, well, "Really?" Every word starts with P. Yeah, I'm like, like how do, how do my and the director's in on it, like, yeah, yeah, if we can get a few takes on that, and I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> all right, you know, and then and then deliver this ridiculous line that makes no sense in context. I'm I like, liked right, Paula cool, got... Abdul's first three albums, but yeah. the last three <laughs> film, stuff like, like that. Right? Yeah. And they're like, all right, cool, we got that, we got that on tape. I'll go ahead and send that over to uh, to Michelle. Uh, now we'll get you the actual line of dialogue. I'm like, oh, that's messed up. That's you! messed up. That's messed up. Right. Thank you. It's a good question. Right. Thank you. We should go faster. Yeah, Let's go. Yeah, Let's go faster. Yeah, Let's go hi. faster. Hi. We have about oh, two hi. minutes left. Um, oh, left. My Super question fast. is for Marisha and Tallison. Okay. What was the most defining moment in your character for either Keyleth or Percy for like a turning point? How, what, what moment is the most important to that character? Um, Lightning round. I think about Patrick Rothfuss and talking her down out of a panic attack quite a lot. Because the, the rest of Vox Machina was too distracted and too in the moment, and he was like an outside force that was like, yeah, let's relate for a second. Let's go outside and relate. Hey, girl, you want to go relate? <laughs> sure. Uh, go relate and Relations? chill. Relations? Rip, 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 uh, Ripley and Orthax in the dungeon was like the, the moment where I'm like, okay, I finally figured him out. Was, mm. was when he was finally having that like, what is happening to me? What is my life? Hold on. Yeah, that was really, that was his moment of actually getting some clarity. Yeah. Cool. All Thank question. you. Great question. great question and great yeah. costume. Great costume. Great costume. Good. Clank, clank, clank. Freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true disadvantage. Yeah. 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 Now you know <laughs> why. <laughs> Uh, this is what I'm doing. So this is my friend, Lindsay. It's her first con. And oh, uh, she's going to ask the next question. Okay. What's up, Lindsay? Hi, Lindsay. Welcome. Okay. So obviously there are plenty of classes to be taking that are helpful for voice acting and writing. So for you guys, what has been the most beneficial class that you've taken? Oh, man. Improv. I improv has been huge. Improv uh, and cold reading. Cold reading. Cold reading classes. Um, I, I, there's some classical theater. I liked, I liked learning history of theater. It was very useful. Yeah. The hardest part is just picking like a few things and committing 100% in those cold read auditions. And even if it sucks, at least the director knows that you can commit. And yeah, make a choice and, and stick to it. And make a choice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Making mm -hmm. a choice is massive. And then the director will say like, new choice. And then you just go, no, I'm Faye Dunaway. Duh. And then you go, and then that's always a Faye new Dunaway. choice. Always and Faye Dunaway. Always Faye Dunaway. Mm. Never go full Faye Dunaway. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Not even Faye Dunaway goes full <laughs> no. Faye Dunaway. No, yeah. she knows better. But, it, but that, that tells them that you're malleable and can be directed and can make a strong choice. Even if it sucks. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, thank thank you. you. Good question. Yeah. Guys, I am And if so you're a writer, just sorry. Google David Milch and watch any video where he's talking because he's a genius. <laughs> Hi. Joke, right? Guys, I'm so sorry. That oh, was okay. our last one. <gasps> I apologize. Hey, but our talks, our, our, ta our panel one tomorrow one is going to be an hour Q&A, so you can always ask oh, questions what's your question? Tomorrow. What's your question? Okay. Well, this is inspired by Matt. Oh, God. Earlier, you mentioned Marisha. Uh, you mentioned, like, sh maybe she was shut down because of, like, a woman can't do this or whatever. And I was, and this is probably a good general persevering question. I'm a woman about to go into a tech industry, which is a male-dominated field. Yeah. yeah. Big time. And uh, Marisha, like, what what do you do to, you know, 
pep talk yourself, essentially, <laughs> during those times. Man, that is a and it might, tough it's probably, last like question. Said, a general thing. It's That's a very good one. layered. Um, I know. I'm sorry. It's a bad no, last it's good. question, right? It's good. <laughs> it's a good um, question, though. Great question. And I mean, I, mean, I, I think uh, first and foremost, I think I always try and speak to our boys, our guys in the yes. audience, and say that you also have like a yes. responsibility yes. here. Um, like feminism is not a female exclusive problem. Um, this is something that it's a team issue. Um, so yeah, you, everyone, everyone has a responsibility here. Um, I do a lot of stuff like super subconsciously. Mm -hmm. Like if I have a big meeting, I'll wear a button down shirt and slacks and boots. Um, yeah, but I, I think what I try and keep in the back of my mind is that I'm not the first and I won't be the last, mm -hmm. and there are more allies than enemies, and to just find your allies, yes, mm -hmm. and they will be your, you know, they will be your guiding force and your your strength behind you, but to definitely persevere, and. You got this, girl. You Thank good. you. Don't take no for an answer, <laughs> like she yeah, said. Don't take no, don't for, an take no for an answer. Yeah. Love you guys. Do not take no for an answer. Thank you, guys. I'm so sorry for the people who couldn't get to your questions. We have other panels this weekend, so if you didn't get your, your question answered, bring it to the next panel. We'll try and get to it then. And yeah.